Hey, Floss Tube. That's Julie. That's Sarah. And we're Gulf Coast Stitches. We have not been in a video in a hot minute. Things have happened. <laughs> um, we have an uh, overhead fan blowing on us, so if we're adjusting, that's why. So, pandemic. Back to work. Back to school, kind of. I got a full-time job. stitching <laughs> jobs. Yes. Um... Yeah, so we're just gonna jump right in. It's been a long time. We have I have a, an embarrassing amount of haul, but you know, whatever. You gotta... I have a, an embarrassing, like tiny amount of everything. So she doesn't ever we're... have haul. It's just whatever I give her. Yeah, we'll just balance. We'll balance yeah. out. <laughs> so we're gonna start with stitching because we do have some Netflix recommendations and some book recommendations that we'll save for the end. So if you're not into that, I've been on a book kick. Uh huh. Anyway. Um, <laughs> But real quick life update, Eric is at, what do you call that? Basic. Training. I didn't know if it was called something different in the Army. He, Eric has gone off to the Army. He's, um, his training's been delayed a little bit because of COVID. He's okay, but that's just how they have to do things. Um, show that really cool, awesome gift oh, you yeah. got in the mail. Um, so if you are new to our channel, Eric is my boyfriend. We've been dating for three years. He's part of the mm -hmm. family. Um, and he recently has joined the army. We always knew he was going to, it wasn't a surprise or anything. Um, he's going to be a helicopter mechanic. He's super excited about it. Um, and as like kind of a going away, kind of a three year anniversary present, he had this, um, painting print made. So, um, I'm in nursing school and he's in the army. So it's just kind of like, so cute. It's like cute. graphic design. It's yes. really, really cool. So it's a digital artist. And so she does digital, um, like portraits and different things. And then she screen prints them onto a canvas for you. So the hair is really cool. Yeah. Like the hair is incredibly detailed. Super cool. And I'll try and see, um, I'll come back later and comment on this video with yeah. her Etsy shop. So that came in the mail. That was a cool surprise. I feel like I, know, um, I feel like we're at a really strange angle and look square. Be. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I look like a square. Um, I'm also expecting a call from Eric today. Um, hopefully it's the end of his quarantine time at basic training and he'll actually be starting training. So if the phone rings and I leave the room abruptly. I'll keep going. We'll just keep rolling. <laughs> okay, so that's crazy life updates. So I work for the state college, as you guys know, in addition to having my shop. Um, our staff was reduced by 85%, but we've rehired people to bring them back onto campus and we're trying to get, um, I work in testing, trying to get everybody ready for fall and um, figuring out how to do placement tests remotely and proctoring and it's been crazy, crazy town, but I'm happy to say we've got some, some, um, people back on campus. So that's all exciting. Um, okay. I'm going to hop right into whips i really only We've got have... a bag of stitchy goodness oh my gosh we're gonna here. keep looking down because this is what is under our so a little embarrassing you but... want to see all of the contents of this glorious funness <laughs> stay tuned i've been enabled beyond enabled here put it right here so i can reach it honey. okay so i'm just gonna start sarah has one whip i have i think maybe two in here i don't know this has been my primary focus piece this is Beachcomber, uh, the Shooting Star Collection by Carol Manning Designs. I am like, I've done the whole center part. This is the top as far as it'll go. It's about the size, the completed size is about, um, it'll fill up the Q-snap plus this part will repeat down here. So it'll be finished like 12 by 12 and this is an 11 by 11 Q-snap. So I've been pretty crazily working on this and I love it. So I'm doing this on 18 count Ada two, with two threads because I want like the super dense coverage, my needles sticking through there. Um, I enjoyed the colors. They're not my palette at all. Not my thing. Um, but Shout out to Georgia Girl Stitching yeah. for showing this in yeah, her video. Yeah, she showed it and I had to go buy it immediately yeah. because I have no willpower. And, um, but it is really... I feel like this is like meditative stitching because once you establish the pattern, you just find you're just going around geometrically and doing it and repeating and they're all the same count. This is full coverage. Um, yeah. So I've been working on that. Sarah has a whip. Show your oh, whip. I have the same whip that I've had in the last videos. Um, I have not worked on this very much recently because, well, one, I have been working a lot. I actually just finished working on Friday for like, so I'm done with work starting school next week. But, um, 
anyway, besides the point, I haven't stitched a lot and I went on a five day vacation to the mountains and I thought, oh, this is what I'm going to finish. Like I'm going to have so much stitching. I only brought one needle and I lost it on the first night we were there. Rookie. And I think it slipped between the wood floor planks and it was never to be seen again. So I have very little progress, but I still am almost done. <laughs> I mean, I started, uh, the only difference I think from the last time I showed this, I might have a little bit more of the anchor at the bottom done and I have barely started this fill in. That's actually what I was working on when I lost my needle. So oh, I haven't even seen that progress. That looks awesome. Yeah. So so she just got to fill this in, finish the anchor, has another few colors, and there's some yep. swallows that go up top. Yeah, there. a couple swallows, I mean, which if you stretch. follow Robbie on Instagram, she finished this in five minutes. In five minutes, beautifully. Um, and I really like the way she like fully finished it so I think I'm going to do something similar but I'm going to look for an oval frame instead of a square one so mm -hmm. we'll see how that goes first I got to finish stitching it so so I just want to share that my Carolyn Manning project I have it housed in this awesome uh, made by Mama Joan bag blackbird fabric I just thought that was that's probably an acquisition since we spoke last sorry and this is my other whip in the world's tiniest project bag. So this is actually a Notions bag that Jennifer Whistle Stop Stitcher sent me a long time ago with a bigger version of the same bag. And um, I was like, this is perfect for my purse for this cute little Chessie and Me kit. So I think this is from 2016. I bought it on my spending spree I went on. So cute. It comes with all the things. So... It's so a lakeside wood smoke linen. This is as far as I am. I only started yesterday, so not very far. And also, I've been doing a lot of um, I've been doing a lot of TV stitching. By that I mean I hold my project in my lap while I watch TV and get distracted. Mm -hmm. It happens. Um, so that's a, the tiniest slip starts. And then I got this at Market. I got this at Market. It's from Fripperies. It's actually a needle gauge for knitting needles. Um, but so the holes each one gets progressively smaller and it has the uh, corresponding number of the needles but for this little kit is the is the perfect little floss holder because it comes just with the enough floss that you need to do the project so i thought this is just too stinking cute to have in my little purse at work cute i think that's only two lips so gosh there's um, crazy haul and it's going to be erratic and it's going to bounce around because I'm just going to pull stuff out. So project bag beauty. I don't think I showed these the last time. I don't think I had them then. Um, these are bags by Lisa Smith. So um, I just love her project bags and I love her. Love you Lisa. Um, she knows right away. She's like, I, she sent, I think she was with Lori, um, and they were looking at a fabric store and she, they were like showing paired up fabrics that they had for quilt plans. And I was like, I need that, which she already knew. So she had them made right away. I feel like whenever they go to a quilt store that I have a personal shopper and anything for animals wearing clothes, you guys know how I feel about that. Well, I bought this for those Pugarellas. Look at that. The cow's cute. Everybody's cute. I was say the cow. But the pugs, they're snuggle pugs. So, this one, interior fabric. If you're on the fence about a Lisa bag, don't be. She puts always puts like a cool bobble or something. Usually it's buttons, like this. But this has a little sparkly light bulb. And then, also because animals are in clothes, those bears. I'm not usually like we live in Florida where it's never winter very much, but foxes and bears wearing. I mean, that bear has a cardigan on for goodness sakes. And this is the interior fabric on this one. And they're, I don't know how you describe that. I don't, I'm not a quilter, but they got some something in them. They're like, yeah, hefty. I don't know how to describe it, but high quality. Dear, and this little charm says, Dear Santa, I can explain. Um, and I did order, I haven't got them yet for a haul for the next video. The only bit of haul I should have 
unless something crazy happens, is I ordered two bags from um, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts because I have she had some on Etsy and I wanted them. All right, Sarah, I'm gonna let you start showing all this embarrassing amounts of. I'm gonna put this between us. We'll, we'll do fabric. Okay. Sorry about all the wrinkling, but not really, because it's amazing. <laughs> Sorry about the wrinkling, but not really. Okay. Okay, do you want to start? You start? can go ahead. I brought a lot of fabric. Okay, this is hand dyed by Stephanie. Mm -hmm. um, caramel Macchiato 40 count. Okay. Look how pretty. It is so honestly Caramel Macchiato, I can't think of a better name. Nope. Gold tools. I bought all this off of Etsy. I just sometimes sit there quietly while everybody else is watching TV and buy stuff on Etsy. Yeah, we always know what's going on though. Over there. <laughs> no, but everybody knows. <laughs> Um, this one is XG Designs. XG Designs 46 count. I'm trying to read that. Light drab. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see if I could. So the lighting is kind of making this look a little cooler, I think, than it. A little more blue on camera than it actually is. It's kind of more tannish. More tannish. I don't know if we have something to hold it up next to. No. Yeah. Well, that's really a little more. more. So that's light drab. This is Legacy Linen 45 count Jersey Cream. That's pretty true. So I wanted to find out what all the hype was about. So also Legacy Linen. I got 37 count Russian tea cake because everybody's doing it. Everybody's buying the Russian tea cake. So I got these from Hoop and Frame. Fantastic customer service. Very quick. Easy to order online. Um, this is 38 count Filbert, which I'm sorry about the packaging, but I'll never get to. They have tissue paper folded up in them too, which is really, really nice. But I don't want to unfold it and fold it back. And then this is Fuller's Teasel. This is pretty much very close in color to Russian tea cake. I mean... That Russian tea cake right there. Yeah. Just so, so I guess on camera it's coming up a little bit um, richer, but it's very, very similar. And mm -hmm. so I'm not mad about it. I absolutely don't have any problem needing more neutrals. Okay. Um, is this color and cotton, I think? Yep. Okay. Color and cotton 40 count sand dollar is what this is. I love that. I don't even know what I'm going to do with that, but couldn't pass it by on the. Somebody de-stashed it or something. Mm -hmm. This is hand-dyed fabric from Country Stitch. And this is called Thundercloud in 36 count. So it's kind of purple. That's good. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Kind of purple, brown, red. If that's a thing. And then very similar to that is Cherry Pit Brown from Dames of the Needle. I'm trying to kind of see... This one's a little browner. Speaking of thunder, it's thundering. It's thundering. And but it's beautiful in the backyard. So, forty count London fog from under the sea. It's kind of a blue gray. And this, I really like this. This one. is my favorite of um, colors I've haven't had before. So this is Lucky Penny, forty count Lucky Penny by R and R, and it's green, but it has just the slightest wash of like a tea dye over it. So gorgeous. So that, I think, is a substantial amount of fabric. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure there's going to be more in here. Okay, non-chart um, related. Then we're going to launch into the chart. So get your pencil and your pens ready. So I love these. Um, so you know how you have composition books in college? Well, these are 100% post-consumer um, recycled and they are decomposition books <laughs> so this one birds birds and berries i love it and then that. so i'll find something to stick in there show this oh yeah okay this is currently this is sarah's pencil case but i had to go out the exact same day and buy one myself so it's called a does that Zip say it? lenny lenny or jenny binder pencil case i think that's lenny 
So I don't know. It's from Target. It's from Target. Back in school Six ninety nine. Tax free week for us right now. But it has a frame in it like a doctor's medicine bag. So perfect for retreat stitching, sitting on the chair, throw your anything. anything. So how how are you using it right now? Right now, it's sitting on the arm of my chair, and I threw my highlighter and my scissors and orts. And you have your cell phone in there when it's charging. Yep. So it's super big. Like here, I have an iPhone eight. You can see it fits like perfectly in there and I got it because I was like oh highlighters and pens while I'm taking notes at school sitting right there and as soon as I took this out of the Target bag she was like we're going to Target we're going to Target and to get that that's perfect for a retreat so that happened um, I still haven't taken the cardboard off mine but. I have mine's in use <laughs> okay so this are uh, okay so now we're gonna launch into the antique um, I've been enabled by Lisa and Brenda and Laura and all my friends. Um, we have a group, uh, we have a secret, sh not secret, that sounds weird. <laughs> we have a private um, Instagram chat that's um, titled H&H &H Reporting, Heart Attack and Hernia. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start pulling out H&H &H worthy um, charts that I may have bought on Amazon or eBay, I don't know, or Etsy. So the Sarah Rickett Sampler. You don't go outside. You gotta get rickets. So this is the reproduction. Anything with Sarah with an H, I'm here for. Um, here's a copy of or a photo of the original. I mean, I think I paid a dollar. It came in a page protector. I haven't unpacked it yet, but um, there's a lot of one over one. But not I'm, impossible. Though. Not impossible. We've all seen this. We love it. We covet it. I found it on eBay for five dollars. My name is Lydia by Stacey Nash. So if you search these Kansas City Quilt Star books, you find a lot that have that are chock full of um, multi projects. So there's um, felt projects in here and cross stitch projects and really awesome pin keeps. I'm 100% into. I love scissor rolls and um, this is. So this is actually made into a roll. I don't know if I'll ever get there with it, but look at that. I think that is just a stunner. So my name is Lydia, Inspirations from Schoolgirl Sampler. So put a safe search in for this because you can find these. It's an, I mean, excellent condition for dirt cheap. I don't know who showed, I don't know. Some of the stuff I don't even know how it happened upon. If I was just searching antique sampler charts, I don't know. Um, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So this is old school. From the exemplary. Is that it? No. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, guys. We're here for waiting for Eric. Um, this is the Eleanor Taylor sampler. I love this. And best part completely charted with silks and with some sort of metallic thread which is very silky I don't know what kind of it's not your average metallic somebody may recognize that tag but feel that mmm that's super soft and it comes with the it's a full kit so it was opened but everything's there but this is what I was gonna say was cool it comes with a placard to put on the back but look how cute this is to procure a sample of our wares, send a dollar twenty-five to this address. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna block it out because you may not want that to still happen today. But I thought that was super I think cool. This says Denmark on it. I don't know. Another full kit alert. Cool. Heart attack and hernia. H H. The Ann Hill sampler. I think Lisa. I think you bought this. If you did, I would say we should stitch along. But you actually finished stuff, and I would just be a lagger. Um, but it has a ship. I don't know if you can see that very well. Lots of words. A ship and full kit. Virtue outshines the stars. This is a needle's price by Darlene Osteen. Um, the color, the picture is in black and white, but I can only imagine. I love that floral motif in the middle. Ah, look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so cute. This is in my on my immediate radar. Sweet Liberty 
by the marking sampler. That. I love that. That would look really good on the, um, uh, what's that? Caramel Macchiato. Caramel Macchiato. Sarah's seeing some of this for the first time. Most of this. This is exciting. I love everything Paulette Stewart has ever done, but I really love the older charts. I don't know why. Just because I guess I feel like they're harder to find. It wasn't hard to find. This is Eliza Scattergood. Look at that. So cute. Um, this guy right here. That needs he needs to be a scissor fob. He is a squirrel with a American flag acorn. Okay, that'll be your memorial. But scissor fob. <laughs> My memorial scissor fob. A female worth. Maria bought. It's all in pastels. I love the um, honeysuckle border. I love it. I can't see that because of the glare. Oh, Solomon's Temple is on there. Sarah's fishing it out. It's not a great picture anyway. It's an actual photo I'm stuck on the front of the chart. We're doing our best. We're doing Sorry, our best, guys. Folks. Okay. I don't know what the next H and H alert will be, but Elizabeth, so I'm gonna say Savie. I don't know. 1841. I mean, honestly, this picture is no good, but it's all pinks and reds. Michelle, Michelle the striped rose. If you don't have this, I feel like you should, because it's your color palette. It's really gray in the picture, but it's all pinks and reds. Yeah. Also, on the speaking of Michelle, I saw this. No. I saw this, sent her a photo of it, and then bought it immediately because I feel like we both need to stitch this. It says, Gather ye rosebuds while you may. But it's actually stitched. So the center is a chart, and then the border is a chart, and it's stitched on two different color linens. I probably wouldn't do that, but I just <laughs> love how it's so feminine and dainty. I love it. Another Sarah with an H sampler. Sarah Scottney. Not a great picture again. This is an old Kathy Barrick sampler. Um, it's pinks. It's small. Um, it has these super cute little pigs, or I don't know what they are. You can't see them on there, but on the chart, you see them on the back. You can't yeah. show the chart, though. They're, uh, can I just show them? Yeah, a little bit. Or you can't really see them, but... They're very little right there. It's not that bad, guys. I only have a few more. I thought I thought I did worse. There's probably some I haven't unearthed. This is another of female worth. Mary Fleming. This is dainty, and I'm trying. To, I can't see anything, so I got it. Okay, it's dainty. It has beautiful um, floral birds. It's small. What's the stitch count on that? Design it's, size. Design size is nine and a half by. Nine by like nine by thirteen, so not bad. Oh, this is an H and H alert. <laughs> Get your pencil sharpened, ladies. M M E W eighteen forty seven. I mean, this picture is nothing, but look at this. This is a perfect sampler. Let's see what all we can see in here. I see. There's a a. There's a crucifix. What else do you see? People. It's like a family of four right there. Yeah. Adam and Eve. It's, I mean. I need my, I need readers to see I need readers because the picture is wee little. There is some flying babies. Oh, I don't like the fly, flying angel babies, but sometimes you gotta suck it up. A couple roosters. Some birds. Pull that out and show the picture closer, please, because that, that's it. It's not a great picture, but... I think it probably is better than us just listing off what's in the picture. Yeah, you don't need us to just <laughs> read to you what is photographed. But look at the colors. I mean, I love everything about and this. And pause. No. Oh. Yes. Okay. It's it's beautiful. All right. Uh, and when I bought the other Kathy Barrick, I think this one came with it. This is a Carriage House Samplings, um, the song they sang. It's very 
Pennsylvania-ish. I like it. I think it came with something else. I didn't seek that one out. Okay, this one. Look at this. Oh. It's for me and my house will serve the Lord. Look at those trees. And this is all cross-stitch. I double-checked because I had a slight panic when I saw it and thought, well, what if those are some kind of fancy knots mm -hmm. or some kind of weird double back double back flip chain rope stitch that I don't know how to do. But nope. Here's another kit. Sorry about the crinkle. It came to me in this. It came with a real copy and a working copy, which I love. Fully kitted with the DMC and the fancy floss that was required. So she sent me both the original picture, which has the picture on it, and her working copy. And this is the Perseverance sampler by Chessie and me. It's little. I think the finish size on this is like probably 5x7. But it came with a linen and... I'm trying to not can be you, I don't crinkly. think you could crinkle more if you want I know. To. I'm trying to not be crinkly, but it came with all of... It came with the linen and all the flosses and floss away bags. Wonderful. Great. Two more. Oh my gosh. And I got... Um, I bought this from... A lady named Teresa and she put a sweet note in saying that she loves our floss tube. So I'm going to share her email address. Destash declutter and put money in your pocket. So she must have a destash service. I don't know but I got some great stuff from her. Um, but she put a cute note about loving our floss tube which was another thing that was like well, maybe we should actually film a floss tube. Okay these are the last two. Maria Dream, 1828. Birds and flowers everywhere and wait for it. Fully kitted with all the soie d'age. <laughs> Fully kitted with silk. I didn't pay more than $15 for that. Not mad about it. Um, and Teresa, if you know what my real total is, don't tell anybody. Because all them $15 add up. And the final piece of haul because Lisa Smith messaged me and said, if you're looking for this, it's available on eBay. Here's the link. Ah! This is Exampler Dames. True Wisdom. It's a Quaker sampler. Everything about this I love, except for I don't love the over one, but I can do it. So this is highly coveted. I mean, in the cross-stitch world, it's, these are hard to come by. And one purchase I want to make that I haven't made yet, but my trigger finger is itching, is the Rose Quaker. Because Lori, um, Mischievous Stitches finish was just beautiful. I saw uh, Lori Textilist started it. I love the palette. Something's, the palettes are pulling me these days. I don't know. I love it. So there's a complete mess for us to clean up. That's all the stitchy business we have. Um, I still have, st people are asking me, do you still have your shop? I sure do. I haven't updated any um, new inventory lately because... As I've said before, we just need to clean out. And um, so be checking that site for a big sale soon. I will only be able, if I do a sale, I'm only going to be able to do mass shippings on the weekends because work is like 45-ish hours a week right now. But it'll be worth it to get some great sales. So I'm, I'm going to be updating that soon. What else? Love everything Liz Matthews is coming out with. I mean, I love, I love the Sally seashore I think is my, I think that's the name of the title with the oh uh. anyway I could go on and on there's lots of stuff that I love out there right now designers are still working so hard um, I've had fantastic service from every shop I've ordered from um, I do have one order that will be haul for my next video and then I'm gonna be on a buying freeze you guys heard that I could be on a buying freeze um, I have an order from my first order from country okay. sampler is coming and um, I was a little concerned because it was held up for a really long time, but it was for a floss. And um, she said, if you don't mind not having that one floss, I can go ahead and send it. So I'm sure I have the floss somewhere. Or I think Laura said she would donate to my floss cause. <laughs> anyway, um, I have found we've loved watching floss tube lately. Um, there's a whole bunch of new faces, some that I know, some that I don't. We loved finding Georgia Girl. Georgia Girl Stitches, right? She um, is in 
this very similar situation with Sarah, which is cool. And there were actually stitching the same whip at one time, which was cool. Didn't know it. And then she was my inspiration to start stitching the Carolyn Manning piece. So it's kind of fun watching her journey. She's uh, moved to Auburn. So it's just fun watching that. Um, another floss tube that I watched this week that really provided some inspiration for me was Jen Stitching Itch. She, Jen is on a finish, she's on fire finishing things. Granted, she's done a lot of small things, but that's what made me start my Chessie and Me kit because I was like, I think I just need something small because everything I've been working on is really big. So um, I found a ton of inspiration in watching Jen, of course, Brenda and Laura and... Um, another person that's really like touched us and kind of reached through the TV to our hearts and endeared herself to us over the pandemic is Julie McConnell. Um, Julie, I know that um, it's daunting doing a floss tube video every day like you've been doing, but we love it. We're here on the other end. Like, I love it too. I'm like, what's she gonna? What kind of jewelry is she gonna have on today? What? What? You know, what's what's she gonna show us that's new or maybe even not so new, but but new to us? So if you haven't checked out Julie McConnell at Reflections Framing and Stitching, check her channel out. And other than that, we've just been watching some Netflix. So we'll do Netflix talk, and then Sarah's got some book talk, and then we'll be wrapping it up. Yeah. Okay. What you got? Um, books. Did you want to do books first? You just you said... You can do books. Oh, okay. 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 We'll start with books then. Um, really only two books have I been into. The first one... Um, that I'm currently reading. It's called The Woman in the Window. It's about to be a movie with Amy Adams. Um, but it is a mystery slash thriller at times. And it's about a woman slash named... Slash thriller or slash thriller? <laughs> Backslash okay. thriller. Okay. Just making sure. Um, yes. And her name is Anna Fox. She is a psychiatrist who becomes agoraphobic. Um, so she does not leave her New York apartment... Really? However, she, um, her hobby is photography and she uses her camera to look out at the people around her and she witnesses something that she doesn't want to see. Um, something really bad that brings up some old trauma for her. Um, and she kind of takes it upon herself to begin an investigation inside her home. Well, so that's, it's super good so far. I feeling think. it. I mean, I'm like probably a quarter of the That's way. That's a long way for Sarah. Sarah, um, not, she's not a huge reader because she's got a thousand other things going on. Well, I love reading. I, just like her with stitching, read something and then a new book comes out. Or like I follow all of the book clubs on Instagram. And as soon as like Reese Witherspoon has a book club um, or book club with Jenna, like all of these hashtags... As soon as they come out with a like new book club book, I buy it and I want to read it. So that's kind of why. I, but this one has really gripped me and I've enjoyed reading it. Also, um, Midnight Sun, which I bought this on pre-order, which I typically don't do for books. She typically doesn't buy books. She usually but, shops my stash or maybe the used yes, bookstore. Used bookstore. Um, I also love Audible. I've listened to about 10 books on Audible this past year because of my drive home from mm -hmm. school. So, um, but... I bought Midnight Sun pre-order and hardback, which I usually don't like hardback books, but um, if you're unfamiliar, this is the... If you're unfamiliar... Oh, this is the latest um, book in the Twilight Saga, so um, I was in middle school, early high school, whenever... I think you were in the end of elementary school, into middle school. Into middle school, maybe? Because I remember... You were reading them on the bus, and you didn't ride the bus. And I read the bus in middle school. A little bit. Yeah. And then, so we went through, as a twi, she was a twi hard. As a twi hard mama, we went to Midnight Releases at Walmart, when they came on DVDs mm -hmm. and new books. We went to Midnight Movie, movie Theater. theater um, in all of our t-shirts. In and all of Sarah's highly emo um, Team Edward Yes. Black fingernail polish. Well, was I was awesome. Team Edward. Um, and if you I know, was Team Carlisle, but that's because I'm older. If you know <laughs> anything about me, like, I'm pretty girly. My favorite color is pink. Like, I love all these, like, fun things. Like, even my room is, like, purple and flowers. And But in, like, probably, like, fifth to seventh grade, I was obsessed with Twilight. It was the weirdest thing. But 
whenever Stephanie Meyer released this book, if you have ever read the Twilight books, I'm sure most people have or seen the movies, there's like a blackout period of Edward where like from like the end of the t first movie into New Moon in the beginning of Eclipse, we have no idea where Edward is. He's just kind of gone. This is where he was, We were people. salty about it at the time because we went, I remember us going to watch the New Moon, New Moon. and we were like, where is Edward? Team Jacob? Where's Edward at? Right. Yeah. So Edward's getting his moment. His time is here. So I'm super excited to start this, but I'm kind of holding off until I finish The Woman in the Window because I don't want to take away from either one. Um, she, it's, she's going to get sucked but, in. Yeah. I'm super so for books for me, um, I'm a podcast listener. I'm obsessed, obsessed, obsessed with all things true crime, as you know. So in the true crime podcast world, since my last update, um, the uh, let's, the Golden State Killer, Joseph D'Angelo, pled guilty to 13 counts of murder and kidnapping, which, hello, we know he did it. We have DNA. Um, but it just saved the... It, it saved him from the death penalty. He's in his late 70s. He's not going to live forever anyway. But it provided a lot of closure, so that was kind of exciting in the podcast world. And otherwise, I... Um, it's funny, I listen to two kinds of podcasts, oh, three kinds, true crime, self-help, and Christian living, so it's kind of a weird mix, I but, advice. like, I, I have to, ba I need, I need, I listen to some heavy true crime, and then I listen to, um, is it Unfiltered? I think that's the Phil Robertson podcast, which mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying, um, it's like listening to a conversation with my dad and, and uncles, just talking about, um, all things from, living in the South to talking about Jesus and I love it. So that's a good podcast. And for books, so I ordered a book. I work at the college as, as I've said, and they have a um, certain amount of grant money that they can buy new books to put into circulation every year. Well, this year they've got more money than they had books because there's not students on campus yet to be putting in requests and interest. So we watched on Netflix a show, which we're going to talk about a little bit, um, Down to Earth with Zac Efron. And um, the guy who's on the show with him, Darren Olean, who has a podcast as well, also has a book called Super Life. Um, and he kind of studies people that live in blue zones, so places in on the world where people have highest concentration of centaurians is that how you say it yes people, people who, are people over who live over 100 so it's just interesting um self-help uh it's a great show so that'll kind of that's all I've, I've had my podcast and i ordered that book to come into circulation at the library so i'll check that out whenever it comes in i fought purchasing it because i can check it out from the library and i also bought all that stuff that you just saw so um I got a little bit of a promotion at work because I celebrated with stash purchasing, but I reserved, I held back on the books, so I was proud of myself. Mm -hmm. And we went to the bookstore yesterday yes. and didn't buy any books. We just perused and I bought a notebook. We was it. read the backs of books yeah. we think we might like, yeah. so. And like say, oh, you know, but I mean, the trouble is with reading, if you're a stitcher, you know this, and you can't, it's, it's difficult to read and stitch, so I listen in my car read if I'm on a break somewhere. Um, sometimes I get into a book and I can't put it down. That happens and I get away from stitching a little bit. But yeah. So anyway, that leads us to what we've been watching on TV. So we binge watched um, kind of late at night after Dan was getting ready to go to bed because he could care less about it. But we watched um, Down to Earth with Zac Efron. Um, what do we want to say about that? It's really good. Not also, only, also, okay, not only is it super entertaining and, like, it's fun to watch. They go to all these different places all over the world. Um, they go to, like, Lima and Spain, and they go to... My favorite was when they went to... They go to Paris with the water. Iceland was my favorite. Iceland, um, Costa Rica. They go to all these cool places, and it's Zac Efron, and he has had this transformation of mind, spirit, and body. And body. For sure. He, he's grown. <laughs> Zac Efron is grown now. So yeah. it is fun to watch all the cool places and also enjoy Zac Efron and his friend Darren. So they, and they're funny. It's, just it's great time. escapism TV because they're traveling the world. It was filmed pre-COVID. So yes. it's nice to turn on the TV and see Iceland and 
you know, we can't fly to those places right now. We, if, if we could, we wouldn't because we're trying to slow the spread and all of that good stuff. But it's really good escapism. And um, there's a clear agenda if you're someone that's turned off by that. There's definitely a climate protection agenda on the show. Yes. They advocate for they advocate, the fact that climate change is happening. Right. So keep but that in mind if you're deciding if you're it. If you're turned off by that kind of stuff, it's not overwhelming, though. It's just kind of like, uh-oh. We're still on. We're still Sorry. on. Sorry. Okay. Computer technical We don't want to update right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> We're back. So, um, anyway, just saying that it's like... Um, they just try to connect like how food and the agriculture cycle and the climate and everything mm-hmm. all works together and how it can, we can all work together for good with it. So that's really, it's pretty uplifting too. Yes. And it's kind of like, I, I mean, know we've been recycling more since watching We've been it. recycling more. We've been, I've been drinking better water that I'm not yeah. willing to share with Sarah. Um, <laughs> that's not true. A little bit. It's true. Um, so anyway, if you're just looking for some feel good, that's really good. Yeah. What else have we been watching? We have finished In, in the, the Dark, dark. which, sh- shout out to Julie McConnell again, like, we were both, wa- we, we unbeknownst to each other, her and Dan were watching it, we were watching it with our Dan, and she made the comment that it was something that they were um, watching, and that se- season two was a little bit better, and it picked up, which it did. Yeah. Season so, two was popping on that. So I if- would say season one, two stars. Yeah. Like, Season one, I kind of, I didn't really like any of the characters, I didn't really like the story, it was very, like, superficial feelings. Kind of teeny, teenage Yeah, it feeling. was very, like, teen drama, and then season two, it, the twists started happening, it got twisty turny, and I would say it ended at, like, a four and a half star. So, so. Uh, brief plot, problematic blind girl. And her involved, her injecting herself into precarious, Murder. murderous situations. Yeah. yeah. So it, it picked up a little bit. We have also watched, um, we watched a crime documentary today. Not really a crime documentary, an HBO documentary called um, Something's There's wrong Something with Wrong with Aunt yeah. Diane. And it was fascinating. We enjoyed it. It was, uh, it's a true story about a lady who was involved in a fatal car accident and the toxicology reveals that she was intoxicated, but her family refuses to accept that. So that's really good, and how they, um, how the, all of that yes. plays in. It's really good. And I finished the. They didn't watch it, but I finished. I'll be gone in the dark. Um, if you're not, sh- if you're on the fence about true crime, or you've never tipped your toe in it, and you want to read really premier writing. That's not all about slashing and it's, it's the least impactful part of the story is the actual murder, but it's more about how everyone is impacted. I'll Be Gone in the Dark um, by the late Michelle McNamara is f- just fantastic. And there's a six part mini, se- mini limited series, not mini series, limited series on HBO with the same title. Um, many of you know that she had a blog, um, Crew Crime Daily, True Crime Daily. Um, and her husband is Patton Oswald, fantastic comedian, fantastic actor, and it it's just about the journey of her um, writing the book, and then her untimely death, and then after she died, we now know that De- Joseph D'Angelo was arrested, and just how she impacted so many lives and didn't live to see about to see it, but I believe that she had a hand in it still. So that was phenomenal very uh feel the last episode is it's a tough one just because there's so many people's lives that were affected by that story we um, also watched the reckoning yes um one more true crime book thing before we talk about sorry. the reckoning no i was just gonna say if you're not sure and you want to read stuff that's like maybe not if you're intimidated by if you're interested in the psychology that book and also anything by ann rule okay that's why um we also watched the reckoning which is super good. It has, what's that actor's name? Sam, Sam Trammell. Yeah, Sam If Trammell. you ever watched uh, True Blood, he was Sam on True Blood, too. Yes. So he is um, him and this other guy, Australian guy. Australian guy who's also in Rectify. Same yes. actor. He's got, you would know his, you know his mouth if you saw <laughs> You would it. know this part you if would you know, saw yeah. it. We don't so, know his name. Um, but 
two really good actors. I thought the show was awesome. Dan thought it was kind of slow, but it is um, a very clear, like, dichotomy um, of these two characters throughout the whole... It's a limited series, so throughout the whole limited series, but it's not a documentary. It's, it is fiction, um, and I thought it was really exciting to watch because mm -hmm. as the audience, you know the truth the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of try to think yourself out of it though yes you don't want it to be the truth mm -hmm. but you know the truth yeah. and the characters you're watching them discover what you already know to be true and so I thought that was a you're really kind interesting of watching way. them also like spiral which is always any good entertaining. crime show has a spiral but the thing about uh, the reckoning that I really enjoyed like I said the the brilliant part I think was just the it's that same story of, like, the mirror having two faces. Like, there is a protagonist and an antagonist who are, like, opposite sides of the same coin, pretty much. Yes. And so there's a lot of parallels. I think I've mentioned before I took a film class, and ever since I took that, I can't watch anything the same. It's opened up so much to me that, um, and I, of course, shared that with Sarah. So we, we watch things in with the same mindset. And so things that are independent or a little artsier that we appreciate, like, the director of photography, we appreciate the lighting, we appreciate the sound, we're into it, and Dan's kind of like, ah, oh, the story's okay, but that's, all the parts are there in Reckoning, so that's a good one. Um, we have not watched season three of Marcella yet, but it's queued up. We also want to watch, uh, we have one, and when we finish here, we're going to go watch the last episode in the in the limited series, I you know this I know, I know this much is true, true by Wally Lamb. Uh, Mark Ruffalo is playing uh, two characters in that movie show. Show. Um, so we have the final episode of that to watch. So we're kind of winding down, and we're looking for new things to watch. Um, I'm trying to convince them to start Black Sails. We watched it a long time ago, and I know Dan would like it. Um, the thing about Dan is that. He seems like he's not paying attention to things, and then he just, bam, like, throws out the whole plot and tells you everything that's going to happen. It's so hard to, like, gauge what he's going to like, because you'll think, like, The Last Kingdom, for example. I thought that was, like, the best show ever. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting, great characters, like, this is awesome. Dan was like, it's, it's kind of predictable, and I'm like... What? Like I mean, it is historical, so we do know how it's going to turn out. I was but. like, what the heck? Like when you, you just when you think you know what he's mm -hmm. into, he'll throw a wrench. Like reckoning, I was like, this is perfect. He loves mystery. He loves like he loved Ozark. He likes twi He he is has a, he thinks through the plots, and I think he enjoys when it he doesn't have it figured out. Yeah. So like ninety percent of shows are predictable to him. So he's yeah. kind of like, eh, you know, if there's a likable character, he's in for it. But otherwise, he's like, oh, I can tell you exactly how this is going to end. A funny story about Dan. So if you ever watch Mad Men, and you oh, know yes. Don Draper is... Mm -hmm. <laughs> we love him. We and can't we, hide it. We love Don We're Draper, and we love Peter it. Campbell. Okay, so the yeah. two, like, fairly unlikable people on the show are our favorite characters, and it drives Dan insane. But he, they're our that, favorite characters because... Because of the complexity yes. and because of the fact that they're problematic and but. because of all that and Dan's just like, if I behave like that, if you guys I cheated on me. my wife, you guys would never talk to me again. Well, you're right. yes, <laughs> but you are not Don Draper. It's mm -hmm. not 1950 and you don't run an ad agency. So there's right. a lot of, you know what I mean? Right. So it's a different, yeah. we in a different day, but we did so. love that. Um, so there's lots of new stuff. We'll have new, we'll have new show recommendations, I'm sure, by the next time we make a video. Sarah found out her move-in has been pushed back to... September-ish. So it's September anywhere from the 4th to the 14th is what Currently. they told us. Um, they will let us know whenever I have a date. I'm supposed to find out Monday what my move-in date is, but I, I'm, I'm not holding out because... Life, I mean, COVID is crazy right now, and my school's in a big city, so... Her school's in Nashville, and she will be taking classes and attending Vanderbilt a lot, which, there's a CDC satellite there. And uh, Vanderbilt actually had a lot of the first cases in Tennessee because of their um, study abroad programs, mm -hmm. so... I mean, in Italy was a really big study abroad in Vanderbilt. Unfortunately, a lot of students were exposed to COVID before the U.S. understood what was going on. But 
Luckily, Italy knew what was going on and they sent all of the study abroad students home. However, those students went back to school um, and so there was a lot of cases in Vanderbilt. But because of that, I'm hoping that there will be a lot of precautions. Um, so we'll see. I am not... I'm not expecting to actually move back this semester. I mean, it would be awesome if I could, but I'm not expecting it. So. And then, like, as a parent, I mean, Sarah's healthy. She's young. She's call been called to be a nurse. She's going to do all of these things. But she gets sick every time she goes to school on a – from kindergarten – to last year of college, she always gets some sort of crazy itis her first month of school. Like when she's exposed to other people's germs, she gets an ear infection or strep or whatever. And it's a horrible feeling to be all the way here, eight hours away, whenever she's sick. So I'm not even really concerned about her like risk factors for COVID. I'm concerned that she would be far away from home and sick and there would be nothing we could do about it. So whatever happens, happens. Like at this point, who knows? I work on a college where, campus where I see students and parents and guidance counselors. And did I say parents? Because some of them are um, frequent visitors mm -hmm. to my office. And so, you know, I mean, I don't know. We get checked every day. We have all the precautions. We wash our hands. We wear our masks. We do all the things. But who knows? So, yeah. So that's all going on. Now, after we finish these, I always feel fired up to do some stitching. So... There'll be some stitching and so we got a little bit of show to finish. We got some new things to find on TV. Yeah. Uh, uh, we started, so we've been watching a lot of heavy things. So we started. Oh, <laughs> this is embarrassing. We watch, we do, we do. Fact, so, facts. I mean, we watch a lot of heavy things, right? Like, we enjoy that. Um, last night, the debate for what to watch was between Silence of the Lambs and 90 Day Fiance. Sarah has never days. seen Silence of the Lambs. Um, I feel like, I mean, it's an Academy Award winning film, 1991. However, Dan was like, she does not need to watch that. He's just scared she's going to come into our room in the middle of the night. I thought it was hilarious because here I am, almost 20 years old. And Dan is like, I mean, you know, and Dan's going to get nightmares. In Dan's defense, you're like 20 years old and super hyped up about your Twilight book. Oh my gosh. Okay, yes. <laughs> I don't like horror films. Like, I'm okay with some scary stuff, and I'm okay with reading scary, and true crime doesn't bother me. But, like, scary horror, like, But you love a psychological thriller, and I'm telling you. When did I ever say I liked a psychological thriller? I mean, every time we're watching a show and you're like, this is making me so sweaty, I'm so nervous. I know, but... But I'm, you don't look away. I know. Well, anyway, so it was between <laughs> Silence of the Lambs and yeah. 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Days. Anyway, she wanted to watch Silence of the Lambs like a psycho. I wanted you to... I just wanted you to see an Academy Award winning film, so whatever. We ended up watching 90 Day Fiance season, season four. four. <laughs> So, if you haven't seen it, the best character in that whole season is this really nice guy named... <laughs> I feel His horrible. His name is Big Ed. Big Ed's four foot eight. He's... No, four eleven. Sorry. four eleven. Okay. He has a condition. But he's um, so, so but he's, pure of heart. He, he is and pure of heart. And just kind to his lady friend in the <laughs> Philippines. So... <laughs> Think how ridiculous we sound. No, but really, uh, like... Yeah, so Keffy, first of all, congratulations oh, yes. on baby Lincoln. Oh my gosh. When when you sent me a DM of Lincoln before you posted it to the whole world, I have to, t have to say I felt a little special. <laughs> um, and I immediately shared it with Sarah. Um, if you're sitting at home needing something light to watch while you're recovering and getting ready to bring Baby Lincoln home, watch season four. Season four. We need to talk about Big Ed because he Ed. is the man. Yes. So, yeah, that's what we did. So we'll probably maybe watch some more of that tonight. I don't yeah. know. I the don't know. episodes are an hour and a half long. Yeah. So Super long, but I could never I get could enough watch, of I could Big watch Ed. three murders in an hour and a half. Okay, but would you... <laughs> Leave no. with as much a joy no. as you do when you watch no. season four of Randy No, Fountain. it was so good. So, yeah. Okay, so that's an <laughs> hour's worth of us rambling, a bunch of haul, a little bit of stitching. Um, thank you guys yeah. for tuning back in. I know we've been sporadic. Frankly, um, here's the part where I say something unpopular. Um, I, I, lost, I, I lost my floss tube bug a little bit just with all of the things that were going on. And um, it was like all the... 
factions is that the right word like yeah it kinda... became very high school lunchroomy yeah i mean mm -hmm. that's not everybody's thing you know that's not why we started filming videos. right so, so when it got a little like eh, i felt like we're talking less about stitching and more about the state of the world um regardless of what you believe yeah the state of the world is crazy we get yeah. it um that's but that's not what i come to floss tube for so um i kind of got derailed a little bit and lost my love of floss tube not of my core people i watched but i feel like what has happened is i feel like that because i've been blessed with the ability to travel and to go actually meet and be in the room and become friends with the people that i've watched on floss tube um the core group of people that I watch are also core group of people that I text, talk to on the phone, FaceTime, Skype. So I feel connected to them all the time anyway. So when I see that someone, you know, if I see that somebody posts a new video, I'm excited about it. But odds are I've probably already seen what they're working on. They've talked to me about it. So that kind of pulled me away a little bit, I think, just from the drama side of it. But I feel like things have settled down a little bit on the drama ver the drama end. There's tons of new floss tubers. It's not easy to put yourself out there to make content, to um, feel like, you know, it's an independent hobby that you're going to give something and to contribute something to the ether that's going to matter to anybody else. But I will say that without this community, I have lifelong friends who I text every single day who we check on each other every day that would no way would they ever be in my life if we wouldn't have been connected through floss mm -hmm. tube no way um I best friends for life will um be there for each other no matter what and without floss tube I would have never even known who these people are I mean we have friends in all the states pretty much um I hope I can talk some of them into coming down here to the coast to visit, but it's hot and muggy. Nobody ever wants to come here. Um, Are you kidding? <laughs> nobody ever wants to come to Destin, do they? I'm just kidding. So anyway, so that's why we've been absent a little bit, but we're back and we'll try to film at least every couple weeks. I mean, we don't know what's happening with Sarah with school and um, I'm going to hopefully not have new acquisitions because I've been motivated to reduce a little bit. Thank you, Zach Efron. Uh, yeah, so that's it. So we love you guys. We'll see you soon. Have a good one. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.